All right, this is section 6-8, and today we are learning how to solve quadratic equations using factoring. So when we have a linear equation, what would we do to solve this? Yes? Okay, so Nadine says we add 10 to both sides. I get 5x equals 10, divide by 5, and we get x equals 2. In this linear equation, we have one solution. When we have a quadratic equation, okay, we're going to do this a similar thing. Right now, all you know how to do is how to factor that. So we're going to just factor that. And what does that factor to? Just that piece of the equation. Mark? X times the quantity of x minus 5. X times x minus 5. Now, there is a property called the zero product property. And you did this in probably back in third grade. And it said when you multiply two numbers together and it equals zero, then one of those two numbers has to equal zero. So we are using the zero product property now to solve for these x's. We are going to take both factors and set them equal to zero. x equals zero and x minus five equals zero. And then we solve for our x's. The first one, there's no work to do. The second one, we have to add 5, and we get 0 or negative 5. And so my solutions are 0 and 5. You can put them in braces, or you can leave it like that. Now, um, I just gave the, we said that when we had x squared, is it x squared minus 5x equals 0, and we factored it to x, times x minus 5 equals 0, and we got x equals 0 and x equals 5. And I asked you, what are those? What are those, guys? Those x's that we just found, who can tell us what we just found here? Yes, Nadine. They, we are actually, what we are doing, when we set, remember, um, this is the ax squared plus bx plus c equals y. When I set that y equal to 0, just like when we did linear equations, we're looking for our intercepts. And what you just found here at 0 and at 5 is where, since it's a quadratic x squared, it makes a parabola shape. And this is where it goes through. the x-axis. So what you are finding here, these are your x-intercepts. Now, we'll learn more about the graphing later. And for now, we're just really dealing with how to solve these equations. Okay. All right, so the next one, what do you think we are doing? Why don't you guys try one and two? Pause the recording, try one and two, or you can do all the way up to four if you can. I'm seeing a little bit of confusion on number one. So what am I doing? Walk me through it. Anthony? We're going to set both to zero. Both to, uh, Whoops. Okay. And then how do I solve? Keep going, Jacob. Okay, so for the first one, you add four, and then the x equals four. And then the second one, you would subtract x. We're doing inverse operations here. And we get, and I get, okay, now, my solutions are, I usually put them in order from least to greatest, negative 7 and 4. Now, number 2, what are we doing now? Um, Charlotte. And x plus 3 equals? Okay, and so my solutions are? Zero and negative 3. Negative 3, or I can do negative 3 comma 0. Um, like I said, I usually like them in order. My answer sheet will usually be in order, but you would be marked down if they're not in order. Okay. Now, number 3, not any different except for what? You have three factors. 
So now we're setting three factors equal to zero. Okay? So in this case, I'm dividing by three, oops, dividing by three, and x equals zero. Add one, x equals one, subtract four, x equals four, negative four. So I'm putting um, negative four, uh, zero, and one. Yes? Do you always have to show your work like adding the one? Or no. Okay. When it's a one-step equation like this, I don't think you have to show your work. When you have a two-step, you may lose a negative. So I would definitely show your work for those. Um, yes? How is it going to look on the graph? Um, well, it's a, this is going to be a cubic function. Okay? So it's going to cross maybe at negative one, two, three, four. Cubic functions are like this, kind of zero and at one, right? So it's going to be kind of maybe doing this. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry, I should make it go. Oops, there's one. I'm sure it would look much different, you know. You can, we, we can pull that out during the homeroom time and start looking at these on the graph, too. Okay, on the graphing calculator. All right, so now um, we were at number three. Mm -hmm. Number four. Okay, so number four. Are you guys okay to do that one on your own? Okay, yeah. pause it, finish it up. Okay, so. Okay, so here's the answers for number four. Now let's do the next slide, pause the recording, and do the next four. Recording. All right, so number one, you should have had negative two and seven. Number two should have been a zero and seven thirds. Number three should have had three factors of zero negative one and negative two. And number four should have been three and negative one fourth. Okay, questions. All right, so here's how it goes. If you're lucky enough, you'll be given the equation set equal to zero, where our y is zero. Um, so, as we said, our trinomial equation, remember, is ax squared plus bx plus c equals our y. When they're kind enough to give us y equal to zero, it makes it easy. Because over here, what do I know how to do with x squared minus 4x minus 12? What do we know how to do, Mark? No, it's not a trinomial square, but we know how to factor it, yeah. right? So I say what multiplies to negative 12 and adds to 4? Negative 6 and 2. Good. Now, does that look like a trinomial square? A trinomial square has the same answers both times. So I'm going to factor this part, and then I write my equal 0. What's the square root of x squared? Um, x. x and x. And what numbers go in there? negative 6, positive 2, and now we know our solutions are x equals 6 and x equals negative 2. Now, some people said to me, why didn't I put an x there with the 6 and the 2? They're doing trinomial lead coefficient factoring. Remember, I don't need to put an x here. I don't need to put an x here. You're making it more complicated. Do you guys remember that? Mm -hmm. So don't, this has no lead coefficient, so whatever I find right here, right here, I get to put into my fa binomial factors. Okay? All right. Number two, what do you think the first thing we do is? How about Harrison? Good. We're going to GCF. Yes. So my GCF is 5x. 
and then we do our x marks the spot. What multiplies to 3 and adds to 4? 1 and 3. 1 and 3. So I've got my 5x. I've got x plus 3, x plus 1, all equals 0. And what are my solutions, Miles? Um, 5x equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0. And what are the solutions to all three? Um, x, 0, negative 3, and negative 1. Are we good? I know I'm not doing what I say going from least to greatest, but whatever. Okay, yes, I'm understanding, or did I go too fast on that? Okay. Uh, Cheyenne. Um, on the first one, when, how, how do you get 2 and negative 6? Because remember, we, I'm doing my x marks the spot. I say what multiplies to negative 12 and what adds to negative 4. And they came up with? 6 times 2. In order for it, it can be negative 6, positive 2. So I put the negative 6 here, the positive 2 here. The root of x squared is x and x. And then to solve that is negative 2 and 6, the opposite. Okay? All right, so let's try some that are a little bit trickier. Let's see what else we have. It's not really that tricky. Again, what's this going to look like, number three? If, show me with your fingers on the graph what this, X, this cubic function is going to look like. Cubic. Draw it. It's like kind of like an S, right? It's not a parabola. It's like an S or a backwards S if it's negative and a four. Okay. All right, so um, on the next one, what, what can we factor? Do we have a GCF? Jack. Good. I'm going to take out an X. And then what is that called? X squared minus 100. Okay. And how do I factor that? Good. And my solutions would be? 0, 10, negative 10, and positive 10. And it... Okay, questions there. Okay, this is going to be, we've talked about that when we find these, these are your x-intercepts, right? So if I'm factoring this, what do we know about this? Let's go here. This one multiplies to 25. This multiplies to negative 10. What are my two factors? Negative 5 and negative 5. Oh, so it's this, x minus 5, x minus 5 equals zero, or perfect square trinomial. I notice the perfect square, I notice perfect square. Okay. My solution is what? Or solutions? Nadine? X equals five. Five. So, what's that gonna look like on your graph? Just a So here's my graph. If, remember, this is our x-intercept, there's only one intercept, right? And it is here. So what's it going to look like? This is going to be something like this. Perfect square trinomials will sit on the x-axis. All perfect square trinomials, because there's only one 5 on the x-axis. Does that make sense? Okay, we don't have to know anything about the graphs right now just how to solve these. All right, so in this case, I'm, I'm going short on time. Pause the recording and work them out. Now check your work. Okay, we're gonna have GCF factoring with difference of squares. We'll have lead coefficient factoring. Okay, you're gonna have to do your lead coefficient factoring. Now, What's different now? Nadine? It's not set to zero. So how do I get it set to zero? Mark? Add, add. Whatever's on that side, just push it all over and set it equal to zero. Plus 45n. Now I have a, a trinomial. Now what, Alex? Uh, you find the GCF. 
which is? Five Good. And then I'm left with, does anybody know what this is called? N squared plus 6N plus 9? You're going to start to know them. Yes, Harrison? Perfect square trinomial. You can do X marks the spot, or I'm noticing perfect square, perfect square. 5N, it's going to be N plus 3 times N plus 3 equals 0. And what are my solutions, please, Lauren? Um, 5N equals 0, um, then N plus 3 equals 0, and then again N plus 3 equals 0. Not negative N, just same N plus 3 equals 0. And my solutions are? So then Okay. Okay, when they get um, to be like this, even though there's only two, I still subtract 49x. Try not to subtract that coefficient with the higher exponent. We want to keep that positive. Or if that's negative, move it to the other side so that the higher order exponent is positive. It's going to be easier to factor. So subtract 49x. Then we GCF and X out. What is this called, please? Inside the remainder, Anthony? Uh, difference Good. And so how do I factor that difference of squares? Um, it'll be um, 2X minus 7. 2X minus 7. And then 2X plus 7. And plus 7. <laughs> so X equals 0. 2x plus 7 equals 0. 2x minus 7 equals 0. I've got a minus 7. 2x equals negative 7. Divide by 2. And I've got x equals negative 7 over 2. x equals positive 7 over 2. And x equals 0. Okay. Okay, one more thing to show you. Now, we're going to subtract 18x, right? Now, my GCF. I got a GCF. What is it? 3. Divide out 3. Now, once I do that, I'm just factoring this part. That what multiplies to 8 and divides and adds to negative 6. It's negative 4 negative 2. Now, when I'm trying to solve for this, Pay close attention. 3 is never going to be 0. That's not an issue. Even though it's a GCF, it's not a variable that could be anything other than 3. So the only thing that comes into play here is this. Right? I'm only going to set those two equal to 0. Uh, equal 0. Hold on. And so x equals 2 and x equals 4. Stop. One more thing. 3x squared plus 24. Um, hold on. Shh. So when I was here, one other option you have. Please, please don't pack up. 3x squared minus 18x plus 24 equals 0. Now, you know how we factored out that 3? Look what else I could do. I could divide all terms by 3, and then I get x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. I could have divided it out too, because some people are neat and clean, and they don't like a dangling GCF here that has no variable, that won't matter. But be careful with dividing it out right now. Let's just leave it to the side. Pause the recording. Yes.